Good evening and welcome to the October 3rd Board of Education meeting at Marysville. Um, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. We are all in attendance. We have our student member. We have our brand new member. We are now a group of nine. Um, so it's a lovely day. And we're going to move to the good of the order. Is there anyone who has anything to say? Um. <laughs> I uh, came here thinking there was an audit committee this earlier. Sorry, Tim. Missed that. That yeah, went right over my head. But that gave me the opportunity to go watch the girls' soccer team. And uh, I have to tell you that uh, they're doing, I saw minutes of the varsity team, I saw the JV team, and it also gave me an opportunity to uh, see Lily Farrell in action. And Lily, I want to congratulate her. I was reading in the press multiple stories in the Times Union about this young lady. She's a uh, junior. She is a standout member and the captain of the girls soccer team, varsity soccer team. Uh, she's also a very successful place kicker and scoring extra points for the, I would have said the boys football team, but now it's no longer singularly boys. So she's uh, the kicker for the uh, boys football team. And uh, during the week of September 12th through 18th, she was named the Times Union's Girl Athlete of the Week. So I want to congratulate Lily Farrell. <laughs> I think can I add one more thing quick? As of Saturday night, she had 30, 30 goals for the year so far. As of Saturday. Can't so keep up with that. Go ahead. What's that? 30 soccer goals. 30 soccer goals. Wow. That's awesome. That's a lot. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I, I just talked to her father the other day about the, the goal. So. It looked like she was uh, participating energetically just now. Awesome. And RG, you. So um, I wanted to thank the district for bringing back the homecoming dance. I was not present, but I heard that it was, <laughs> it was, quite, it the was quite the event, and the kids were really happy to be able to get together and in a setting like that. So I think it's great that activities like that are coming back and the kids are getting to do, you know, normal things like they did pre-COVID. So that's amazing. And oh go no, ahead. no, I was just gonna say this was something that hadn't been done for like I was hearing eight years or more since the last homecoming dance. And it was very vigorously there was a lot of a lot of active dancing going on. Wow. So my, my yes. kid who went had a, a fantastic time. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was I just attended the school counseling program advisory committee meeting. Um, and they've got a lot of new things in the works, including um, revising the counseling program's goals to align with our new vision, <coughs> mission, and the district goals. So I think that's in progress. They're making good progress. Um, so hopefully at some point in the future I can report out on that. Um, in addition, they um, had to do some creating, creative things with staffing this year because they had posted a position for the middle school, high school, and they were unable to fill it. That required um, shifting uh, counselor from the elementary school up here to provide coverage and um, then they were able to fill a position in the um, elementary school as a, a pro school counselor. Um, we talked about the COVID funding, which is providing funding for, for some of these additional counseling positions that we've been able to add. Um, so I know it's going to come up again next year um, in terms of how do we continue to support those positions. So hopefully we can figure out a way to do that. I've also talked with them about um, possibly trying to secure some grant funding for some of the more innovative programs that we've started and are, are hopefully going to continue to run. So that is something that the school counseling program is also exploring, which I hope will be fruitful. So, thank you. 
Anything else? Yeah, homecoming was was fabulous. Very. The student government did a great job with decorating, and there was a really good turnout. I would yeah. say it was really fun. It was yeah, I was really glad to be there. All right, um, now we have an opportunity for the public to be heard, and I think. Uh, legally, I should be saying that school board meetings are business meetings which are held in public. During regular board meetings, the portion of the agenda is set aside for the opportunity for the public to be heard. This is a listening opportunity for the board to hear any areas of general concern, but the board does not discuss or respond to questions at that time. Remarks should be concise, limited to three minutes per speaker. Please come to the podium to speak to the board. Open by identifying yourself and your reason for addressing the board. And please consider, we are a community. Our goal is to model respectful and courteous forum. Comments are not to involve per individual personnel or students. Persons wishing to discuss matters involving individual district personnel or students should contact the superintendent or their designee. During regular business hours, the matter will then be brought to the board in executive session if necessary. If public comments exceed the time allotted or to not model civility, they will be halted. That being said, please, if anyone has anything to say, we really do want to hear. That was not meant to dissuade it. Okay. Um, let us now move to item 3.1, the superintendent's report. All right, Sorry. my turn. Fantastic. Thank you. So I have a bunch of things to kind of go over, so but I will try to be as brief as possible, also speak slowly. Um, one thing I just want to bring up even beforehand is a shameless plug for our website, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, we do have, you know, a social presence where we're always working on that. Um, so, you know, I do the other things here. We don't currently have the password for Instagram, but we're working on that. We have a switchover of our communications person, but that will be up and running soon again. Um, but again, I think those things are important and they will be more important as the year goes on too, because we really want to showcase not only the things that we're doing as a district, but for showcase our staff and students. And you'll see a lot of times that we'll go up there, we'll have things that are going on in our elementary school. You'll see some National Merit Scholarship recognition for our high school recently, some different things going on. So please, if you look at our website and our Facebook, we try to do our best by really updating that information. So this, next week, we are starting with our Addictions Care Center of Albany, ACCA. Um, they work out of the Albany County Prevention Services. It's a group of funds that are given to each county. Those counties um, then provide resources to school districts, and it can be a whole bunch of different things. Um, I said about a month ago, and this kind of goes back to one of our board goals, um, the board goal about a safe and supportive environment, is that we're having... Oh, just let me make sure I still keep recording, sorry. So ACCA is coming in, they're doing two programs. They are research-based, evidence-based programs. One's called Apple a Day, that's K through four-ish, five, and they've kind of created a little different program with that. It's a six to eight week program that comes in and teaches empathy, self-worth, and kind of the basics for um, anti-bullying, tolerance, and then also substance abuse prevention, right? Because as you get older in high school and then off in college, you know, learning how to have your self-worth and understanding when what happens when you get in the hard situations, having those tools in your toolbox are really important. So Apple a Day starts in our elementary school. Steps to respect start in the high school. Um, that in the high school, sorry, middle school. That starts next week as well. That's also an anti-bullying, substance abuse, self-worth, um, body image, all of these very positive things. That starts in our high school. ACCA comes in and actually works with our students. There'll be information going out to our parents. Then in November, we're doing a week for our students in the high school, and then we're also going to have a parent week. During the parent week, we then will have, um, parents can actually be trained kind of as the students work, and there'll be a little presentation, but also there will be Narcan training for anybody who wants to go part of that. There will be, um, if you want to have the intervention services, there will be the opportunity to learn more about that for any community members. So, and there's also something called Hidden Dangers. Hidden Dangers is super cool, and as a parent, it's probably one of the scariest things I've ever done. Um, they actually set up a bedroom, and in the bedroom, they say there are 15 things in this bedroom that you need to find, and they kind of walk through them, right? And it can be a lot of different components that you may or may not find in the child's room or things that you could be concerned about and you have to look for them. And it's really difficult to find all of them. And we'll be very honest, we have done it twice. 
still never been able to find it. But it opens up those conversations for families. Like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to have these conversations at home. Or just little things to look for if you're concerned about going into your child's room. It really does give you some kind of experiences of what to do or what to look for if you have concerns. Um, so again, these are resources out to our community that we're trying to provide. And I'm, I'm really excited that it's all starting um, pretty soon. Greg, uh, yep. for people who can't attend in person, yeah. is that the find the 15 things, yeah. something that we could like so, send in an email? Because so, I, I bet yeah. you'd get a lot of people it's, to click on. So I'm trying to actually get them to come back twice. Um, again, at another component, because doing it in person is the best. Um, I will ask ACCA. So the one thing about Hidden Dangers is it wasn't actually offered in our county. Um, it was offered in Schenectady County through a different agency. I liked it so much that I worked with the counties and kind of helped them get it. So they're bringing it here. So this is the first time that Albany County's actually had it in Albany County. Um, they've done a little bit different things, but not this program. So I'll work with them, but this is all brand new for them as well. So I'll find out. Any questions on that? That's Who, all. Okay. I'll go ahead. Who's, it, who's attending this? Um, so which ones? The one you just mentioned. Yep. It. So the hidden dangers for classrooms, we're going to open it up to all community members. So any community member who wants to come, that really isn't for the kids. But, you know, any community member who wants to come to that, that will be an at-night program for parents yeah, and community day. members. It's the second week in November. We don't have a set date yet. Okay. Um, we're still working through some of those logistics. The first week in November is our student health and wellness. And we're really going to be focusing on some high school students. And high school um, class is all about that. We're actually bringing in um, a recovery, uh, individuals in recovery. We're trying to get 20 years old and up. And they're going to actually speak to the students about you know, how addiction started. And we have a wide range. So it's going to be students who were athletes. And then there was an athlete who started using, you know, was given painkillers and so on and so forth. So typically, we bring in two to three people in recovery and speak to the students and have a Q&A. It can be very, very powerful for kids. Um, so that's again in November. Our goal is going to be, we do a lot of this work in November and also code night is coming back where we talk about athletic code of conduct and things like that with all of our students. That's in first week in November. So that way the kids go home, have a lot of conversations. The Apple a Day and Steps to Respect program is in October. There's a lot of conversations. So we're hoping that pumps up our community, get to the, the second week in November and maybe we'll get a lot of community out for that. So strategically trying to build momentum. I was just curious how how it's coordinated. All the, this is, sounds great. I'm just curious how it's coordinated with our existing efforts and our existing uh, social team. Social. Yeah, so it actually all fits together pretty well because the things that the guidance council and the guidance department is doing has really been isolated. Okay. So it's like the guidance counselor goes into the room or the guidance department does this or the school psychologist does this. Now it's a building-wide program, so it just it's another support adding to the programs that we have. Yeah, and then our, our team can continue. Oh, yeah, they're very excited, too. Yeah, we talked about that earlier tonight, yeah. too, okay. just in terms of, like, having this be a consistent theme right. of changing culture. And, you know, the one message in particular we talked about was feelings of belonging, you mm -hmm. know, and making sure that that sort of becomes a part and of, of not, not just the curriculum, but the, the school culture. Our number one goal in the district is welcoming environment, and we've been talking about that and really building it. So this all leads to that, but student self-worth is so important. So, and again, these are evidence-based programs. They're not just one-offs or something that we built. This is something that has been shown and proven to work in other settings and school settings and bringing it. So I am pretty happy that it's here. Good? All right, so our big technology initiative. So as you know, we've really pushed hard with technology to get us up to an, a whole new wave. Our elementary school now has a Meraki web, and it's a new infrastructure down there. So web, the Wi-Fi down there should be much, much better. Um, we were on two different systems in the past, high school, middle school, high school, middle school, and elementary school, all one. We've got a one-to-one -one initiative going off with Chromebooks, and now our next case is the Promethean boards. Uh, the Promethean are the digital... Um, beautiful. If you've ever been to other school districts, you might see them. They're the plasma screen TVs that are touched, that hook up to everything. So those displays are now coming in. They're coming in this week. Right, Jim, Wednesday? Uh, tomorrow yeah. or Wednesday. Yeah, so they're coming in, and then the installation should roughly, they're telling me, 10 days, which is hard to believe. Uh, yeah. They were hoping to do it quicker, but yeah. yeah. It's 10 days across the district. They have about 95 Promethean boards installed. Um, and then at the same time, we're then going to be rolling out our new teacher 
um, workstations, laptops for the teachers um, that can hook up to their monitors and every system. So our technology initiative has went from, you know, technology that was all right to technology now that is really putting us on the forefront of being able to help our students and staff. I'm really excited about that coming out. In what would you use a weekly board for? A lot of different things. So this it's touch. There's a lot of different programs that you can utilize. You can use it for presentations. The kids can come up to it. The teachers can use it for a lot of different presentations. And again, it's like old school. So like your your whiteboard, you can write on it. It will save it. Um, again, there's tons of technology. So I can write notes. I can save those notes, be able to send them to you. I can have different YouTube videos already embedded into it. So it's an all-encompassing all computer, chalkboard, whiteboard, all together. Like a tablet? Yep. But giant size. But giant size, yep. So we do have smart boards um, in the district. A lot of our smart boards are failing. They're not up to date any longer. Um, some of them are now just Absolutely. yeah projector screens. Um, just because the technology hasn't been updated. Promethean's been around for a large amount of years. It was one of the first ones. They're not going away anytime soon. And these on boards, the technology committee's really worked hard to be able to pick the, a system that will be around for. But they are pretty impressive. And you can also do um, FaceTime and all those other things on this one. Maybe, maybe we can get a demonstration sometime in sure. a board meeting. Yep. We'll, we'll have a permission. We'll, we'll have, we have a few that are mobile. Yeah. The potential is there. Yeah. I'll have to have Shauna do that because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I barely know how to turn it on. <laughs> so, all right. And then, really, um, I just want to talk about. Um, Two more things after this, and I'm sorry that I'm a little no, winded, but so the two things I want to talk about are really the the project that was going to be voted on tonight, and our strategic plan and communication plan to go along with it. So the board's strategic plan and the board's goals kind of are really encompassing of what we're doing. The, um, there are two board goals that I want to mention. The Borisville Central School District will be faithful steward of the community's financial commitment to public education and will be responsible in managing all resources. That's that's money. That's facilities, that's um, all of those different things together. And then the Boreyville Central School District will provide a safe and supportive learning environment and facilities that are inclusive, nurturing, and responsive to the social, emotional, mental health needs of all students and staff. So I think there's a lot of components of this that I just want to bring together. Um, first and foremost, you know, the district does a really good job of understanding where we are. We do a five year condition study every year. You know, we do a BCS, we go over where our facilities are. So we're constantly evaluating all of our facilities K-12. Um, we're looking at our enrollment studies. We do a five-year budget. So we really know where we are, where we're going to be in the next 10 years. Budget-wise, it's always doom and gloom after five years, unfortunately. The first year looks good, the second year looks good, and the, and the third year, and by year four and five of a five-year projection, it never looks good. Um, that's just the way those studies are. When we do <laughs> right, Jim? Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm just being honest. But you know, we take all of these things together and we then look at them. And when we're doing this, we look at our facilities and our taxpayers and how we then can meet the needs of them. So the enrollment study is really important because we've known for the past few years that our enrollment is growing. There's actually two kind of bubbles that we're looking at. The first bubble is our current enrollment and the boom in the community. That's been going on, and that's adding roughly 150 to 200 students, correct, Jim? Yep, roughly that. Yep. And then as we go on, now the Albany Country Club, we've known that that was a potential to happen um, for a while, and we've included that within our building scope and project and understanding it. That bubble then goes on top of the bubble where we are. So as our current bubble would end up going down as new, new builds stop, Albany Country Club then would take over and sustain our enrollment. So you'll see a slight more increase to about 350 students K-12 over 10 years. That's not kindergarten one, two, three, four. That's kids in and graduated throughout the district. So you're you're not looking at 175 kids per class. You're looking anywhere between 100 to 125 students per class, maybe 127 if you get a bubble, right? But that's kind of where we're looking for that study. So our enrollment is a gradual build. Um, but we need to be able to meet those needs. Our elementary school is not meeting the needs and will not meet the needs um, with just even having five students per section of 25 students in the classroom. Five sections. 
five sections per grade level of 25 students. Thank you, Rachel. For sure. So that's one thing that we're looking at. So we need to make sure that we're sustaining our community for the long run. On top of that, we talk about safety and security. You know, our elementary school, there's things that are failing. There's storage issues that we have down there that we need to fix. Our stairwell in the beginning is starting to fail. If you ever walk up and you can kind of feel it wobble, that's because we need to actually replace that full stairwell. Um, a lot of those things are important. Our ADA accessibility is actually in the back of the building, not in front of the building. I mean, these are smaller things, but they're important things to look at. Our whole security aspect of the building um, needs a whole new infrastructure, our new PA system. And as you walk into the elementary school, that really is not something that's viable for a district. You walk in and you can either go down or up. You really should be walking into a secure area where you're in the office. We will be creating that atmosphere. Um, so that takes into the security aspect. As we prepare for the future, the transportation facility, um, as we move that out, we're using space that is not prime space in the community. So we're not taking anything away from what we currently have. And we're also prepping for electric buses at the same time, because that's coming down the road. You know, there's a mandate that possibly in 10 years we'd have to meet. We have to be prepared for that. Otherwise it's gonna cost us even more in the long run. So this new project actually takes that into account as well. Um, also managing debt services. So this is important, right? Jim. If I get this wrong, please, you can help me with all of this. So, you know, debt service is very important because you have to ma maximize your debt. If you have too much debt, it's not good. If you have too little debt in the district, it's not good either. It's really got to stay level. Right way to say it, Jim? You, have, you don't want to have peaks and valleys. Right. Let's just put it that way. We want to keep our debt so as no debt is coming off, now we did, you know, coming down, we want to add new debt on, right? And that's always important. So that way our revenue always stays well. And our tax cap says pretty much the same level. So in April, we had a 2% tax cap for the district. That was about 4.16%. Exactly, actually, not about. Um, we went out at 2.5%, so well below our tax cap. The reason why we talked about that is we knew what we were doing. Um, we had every need that we had to meet our students, but we also understood that we were going to go possibly go out with a tax levy on a capital project. So that's, you know, the district was very smart and very conservative in the fact of understanding that you know, we don't want to burden our taxpayers to the point that you know it's too much. You know, we're all taxpayers that are sitting at this table, except for you, Talia, but your parents. Um, but we all understand that it's very important to understand that you know there is still burden. We are a wealthy community, which means we don't get a lot of state aid. It's all taxpayer burden. Um, also, doing the energy performance contract will lessen the initial tax levy that goes out on the community. One other thing I want to talk about this. Um, is when it comes to money, I think it's also important that people don't understand the full scope of it. Yes, it's a $25 million project. After 30 years, it's roughly $29 million debt services that we'll end up having. But I think this is the thing that people need to understand. We'll get $17.6 million in aid over those 30 years, which brings down the local share to $11.6 million. So in the end, it's roughly $500,000 a year on our debt services until 2039. Okay first 15 years. Thank you. And then after that, our actually tax levy goes down and it goes to 1.1%, which is only $275,000. So money comes off of our debt services. Um, so really, if you look at it in that scope over a 30 year time frame, you're not looking at a giant project of multi, you know, $100 million and $1 million per year on the district. It really does, it makes it a lot more manageable when you look at it at that level. So, um, so Frank, yes. Just stop you. I think the question that most people will have yep. is, yeah, that all sounds great, but how is this going to impact my tax bill? Jim? Jim. So <laughs> the estimated amount during the first 15 years is approximately a 2.5% tax levy increase. That will hit in the first year, and it will be a level throughout the 15 years. After that, it actually drops by 1.1% to get to that 275 approximately and remains that way for another 15 years because whenever you build new, that's 30 years. So um, that's the impact. It's so 2.5 on a house home yeah. of $100,000. So the current true value rate is approximately $16 per thousand. That's true value. I, I, per year. Because that's across everyone. Not the equalization rates. That, that, that's the current rate this year. Right. So 2.5% of that is essentially 40 cents. So if this is approved and there aren't 
huge growth, and we know there's still going to be some growth in the tax left, the tax rolls. If nothing changed, it would be approximately sixteen dollars and forty cents per tax. Good. I'm good. This is my gift here. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah. I think it's you know, it's a my, it's an investment in our community. Right, so. and I think that's why I wanted to go back to goal two and goal four, right. because if we don't do anything mm -hmm. and nothing happens, we can't meet the needs of our community. Our enrollment is going to go up, and we won't. We'll be teaching in hallways, right? I mean, these true. are this is the true idea of what's happening. You know, the erosion of the of the ground is still going to erode. We're still going to have that little the crike actually get worse. We're still gonna have the transportation facility in our elementary school with enrollment increasing. We'll still have a failing field at the elementary school, you know, as this all goes on. So that's the problem, right? The problem is, is that yes, this is an investment, but it's an investment that's wise. We're not doing frivolous growth. We're doing things that are needed based off of the data that we have. Um, and that brings us to the next point is our communications plan. So thank you for that. Um, we are creating a couple different things. On our website, there will be a basically an information dump for capital project. All things capital project will be on our website. Um, we're also creating an FAQ that will go out and it will have a lot of that information for the community members. We're doing a save the date that will probably go out the second or third week in October that will give the initial information um, to our community, and that's a mailer, so we're doing a lot of different ways. Um, that will include some dates of the forum and some different things like that. We'll have renderings, maybe virtual renderings that people can go through. <laughs> um, we're going to do some videos. So there's a lot of information that will be coming out over the next few months. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit all of that. I know that was a lot, but are there any questions? If anyone has any questions, who should they? Me. Yep. Okay. If there's any questions at all. From the community, um, just yeah. send them to you. And that will also be a part of the FAQ on the website. There will be a website and an email where you can be able to send emails and questions on any of this. So. Anything else? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. Wow. That was. Uh, <coughs> that's what I said. I no, so, no, don't. That's. This is not something we need to rush. We have. It's been three years, two and a half plus years plus years before that in the making. I think that we can give it its time. Um. But with that, let's move to approved minutes. No one has any questions. Four point one. Does anyone want to move to approved minutes? Uh, I'll move that. Any second? <coughs> any second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, moving through to the action items, we have the treasurer's reports, personnel items. Um, and uh, just to note, Adele Livingston, thank you for 17 years of service. Right. That's really appreciate all that was done there. Um, the, and, and a welcome to the new past monitor as well. Uh, to see recommendations, um, some posters, appointments, and bids for fresh produce and a declaration of surplus obsolete items. Are there any questions regarding these items 5.1 to 5.6? Would anyone like to move them all at once? All at once sounds good. Five one move them. All right, any seconds? Second. Okay, Ooh, the Rob Robin, Robin duo. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone else? RG, um, would you like to mention that there'll be an audit meeting next? Yes, yeah, so we did not meet earlier this evening. Sorry, Tim. Um, <laughs> Tim I'm glad you got to the soccer game. Everyone else got the memo. I'm sorry <laughs> for me. But we will meet, uh, I think, 6 p.m. Yeah, it's going to be a time. fairly long one. Yeah, so I say 6 p.m. November 7th. Okay, so mark your calendars. All right, uh, Tim, you're the chair of the Perkin Committee, and you guys met. Yes, we met on September 27th, and uh, Kelly Lendrum, Karen Conroy, Frank Dupree, Robin Willoughby, myself, and Barbara Owens was in the audience. She had not yet joined our committee, but she will at the next meeting. Welcome. Um, and we had a meeting where we did a number of things kind of as a response to some of the things the board has been talking about. One of them was discussion of minutes. And um, we recognize that the YouTube channel, which videotapes, provides the videos of committee meetings eventually, that is a 
functioning source of minutes, if you will, but we are going to maintain a brief summary that I'm sharing with you right now and you see as a part of this tonight's uh, agenda. Um, so that will continue. Uh, we did take a look at our charter and simply agreed that it needs to get updated in that it contains the mission statement. The old mission statement is no longer. A new mission statement has been adopted by the board, and so we want to make sure that our curriculum committee charter contains the new mission statement, and uh, it will be reflected uh, when that charter comes out. Um, we talked about the new Voorheesville Elementary School reading program, and uh, there are three programs that have been agreed as uh, worthy of review and piloting. Um, it will be, uh, there's a literacy committee that is made up of teachers and administrators, and, administrators, uh, and they're going to be looking at the materials and piloting it. They're going to look at budgetary impact. Um, that discussion will take place in November with the superintendent. Um, they will eventually bring uh, what they believe to be the appropriate program to us for, or to the superintendent for uh, review and uh, a presentation will be made to the curriculum committee. I don't know if there's a requirement that the board adopt anything. I don't know if that eventually. Yep. Okay. So there, that's moving along. Um, we had a discussion about the uh, surplus books that are in the Boysville Elementary School Library. And we had a, a conversation about how probably in the last 20 years, they have not really gone through and weeded out some of the materials that are no longer uh, necessary or obsolete or in bad condition or a variety of different reasons. Um, we have a item 5.6 that I believe just took care of that. Uh, so uh, this is something that we agreed was uh, appropriate for us to do and I'm glad to see that the board approved that. Um, the curriculum and data presentations to the board. We want to make sure that the board is aware, you know, and when it's all said and done, what, in, what instruction is taking place in our schools is very important and uh, the results of that instruction, how kids are doing. And uh, so we want to make sure that on an ongoing basis, there are presentations made to the board uh, <coughs> regarding curriculum, assessment, and climate surveys as they are conducted. Uh, a question was posed, I think it was you, Trish, that asked a question about a seal of civic readiness. And beginning this year for high school students, uh, those in 11th and 12th grade, uh, they will be able to receive a seal of civic readiness. Um, there is a creation of a civic readiness committee to track the system, provide details for those students who are interested in how to obtain this uh, certificate, which which is added to your diploma, Correct. and um, so uh, that we all agreed that was a, a good program to, to initiate. We also finalized our uh, agenda with a uh, items of interest for future meetings. Uh, we want to make sure that if there are you on the board or anyone else who uh, has some suggestions as to things the curriculum committee should be taking a look mm -hmm. at, uh, they will do so. We actually have several items that are already in the pipeline. And our next meeting is going to be on November 15th. That's all I got to report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? All right. And facilities? Yeah, we met on September 13th. I do not have minutes for this. So, Trish and Robin, I'm going to ask you to jump in if I miss anything. Okay. From collecting okay. Uh, okay. I do have the agenda, though, so that, that's okay. a nice guide. Um, we talked about facilities request forms, which is a always an interesting conversation. It's a delicate balance between the facility making sure that our needs are met too. Um, and uh, we're, at the end of the day, leave it up to Frank and you, Jim, to, to make those decisions going forward. But unfortunately, someone will be able to do when you're looking at like a 15 hour day. There was just something that worked. Four days over twelve hours a day. Yeah, there's staffing, there's staffing from issues. Outside you can't staff. From outside uses of different degrees. Yeah, where you just can't meet those needs. Yeah. And you know, we, we did reiterate our, our tiered uh, 
uh, I suppose, approach to that, right? Local community groups uh, get, get preferential treatment, uh, as well as lower rate. Outside groups, you know, it's, it's going to be hard sometimes. Um, we had a bigger facilities overview uh, with Bill and uh, talked specifically about athletics facilities and grounds, and those are all looking good and in good shape. We talked a bit about the lights. Um, I'm not sure if, if anybody's watching, but it's uh, 300 to $400,000 is what we were looking at for lights though, which will put us in capital project per territory. Field. Yeah, per field, um, along with some decisions that would have to be made about what field it would go on, which is something that we hadn't really thought about. And if we get to a multi-use field where soccer, for example, could play on a football field and lacrosse could be played on a football field and football could be played in the football field, that sort of gives you one field to rule them all and one place to put lights. Um, although real-time-ish updates, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Real-time I, I issues. Booked in the, Frank at homecoming. And I don't know if there might be yeah. something that could be done sooner. Let's put it on the next yeah. facilities agenda. That may not be down and out yet. The next capital project for this building will be five years out. Will be five years out, right? But there could potentially be something we could do with lights outside of a capital project in a slightly different way. Stay tuned for the next facilities meeting to see if that has any legs. Um, no spoilers. <laughs> we talked about the ongoing projects, many of which you heard about tonight, the weekend uh, boards, things like that, about festivals, uh, tennis courts, everybody's already seen the tennis courts, I'm sure, if you've driven by, they're well underway. Um, the, uh, the, the track was, uh, it, it was pressure washed, right? I, I, I think I, saw, I was here that day picking up Emma when they were out there doing it, and I, I was here on homecoming in the book. <laughs> I did see some vehicles driving around that, and I'm sure they're coming up tomorrow. They're coming up tomorrow, right, Jim? Touch it up. October fourth. Is that yes? It was it's supposed to start right after. Start tomorrow. It's Home supposed coming. to the resurfacing is supposed to start tomorrow, but I think they're going to do an evaluation and make sure it's up. Yeah. All right. Um, we talked about the uh, HEPA units that we talked about this last time here too, but there, there, all over in all the classrooms. Right? Yeah. Is that how many of them there are? Yeah. Wow. Great, um, so awesome. We talked about the elementary school capital project, which won't bore you with anymore because we've heard about it a whole lot. And again, Frank's already. Um, this is a neat one. Uh, Status Solutions was that the, the company or the? Is it not neat anymore? Uh, see, this is. <laughs> it didn't pan out to where I wanted it, but we're exploring. It would still be an interesting thing to do, whether it's free or not. This was a, a free. Free-ish parts of it may have been free, but a notification system that sort of plug and play and highly configurable, where you can use it not just for safety alerts, but things like systems monitoring, I mean, monitoring your boiler system, as well as you know things like safety alerts or <laughs> teachers need to alert in their classrooms. Say um, a nursing install, you would push the button on your computer, you go nurse would be called and it would notify the group of people that would need to be done through text message, phone calls. Yeah, but also yeah, text yeah. phones, right? Like a, a so, I'm exploring it. The thing I explored, I didn't like. So okay. we're going to explore the next. Thing. But you, I mean, you got me all excited. Yeah. I don't know. If you oh, I like it. Too. I, like, I thought it was super cool. Right? It was but not in concept. Yes. Yeah. So in concept, would, it would be fun. would be interesting to explore further. See if that uh, doesn't. All right. Um, we had a, a uh, proposal come in to Frank from Kiwanis about a, a couple things for some potential improvements they wanted to make to. Snack Shack and the, the area on there, a couple of them really weren't feasible. I mean, that we've talked a, a bit about the drainage situation. Uh, we don't want to be doing too much if it's going to get ripped up um, in the future to put in drainage down there. Although I think we were going to pass along the uh, idea. Yep. Um, I have not had a reply. Yeah. So, but that, that one could be there. Uh, and we talked about the student custodian, which is something that we have, which is uh, awesome. And that student custodian, we're going to do that for holidays. No. So the, the person who was interested in who did it over the summer um, wants to be a student first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yep. So they want to do holidays and he has something. So but we will keep an option open for our students for student custodian. Yeah. That's great that we're doing it. And that's all I had. Did I do this? No. That's good. Shocking. That's all I need. Um, and chair of the policy committee, Trisha. Policy. 
Okay, we have a lot of groups of policies. We have two groups that will be voted on tonight. Um, the first group is the 2310 regular meetings, which is a revised policy for our district. 2325 video conferencing of meetings, which is a new policy for our district. 2340 notice of meetings, which is revised. 2360 minutes of meetings, which are revised. So we did bring these all last month for a first read, which we usually don't do when it's a revised policy, but because they were kind of all grouped together uh, with the new policy 2325, we thought we'd use the opportunity to have a full board conversation, which we did. And now they're finally all ready to be voted on. So that will happen later. Does anyone have any questions on the, those groups of policies? Right. Our second group of policies for vote tonight have to do with um, policy 6741, contracting for professional services. Uh, this is because we discovered this discrepancy um, through our internal audit. So 6741 actually doesn't have any revisions, but it was the parts that go with it. 6700R, which is the regulation. There was one small typo where a 500 should have been a 5,000. Cool. That got fixed, and that will be voted on tonight. And then in 6700E, um, do you want me to just do these right now instead of? Sure. sure. But, okay. That's it. Yeah. The only change in 6700E, which is a purchasing exhibit, was under professional services. It used to say, it used to limit it to the board having to do something only exactly at 20,000. So we fixed the word that said, um, greater than 20,000. So now it says the board shall determine if bidding is required for professional services greater than 20,000. The purchasing agent shall determine if an RFP, RFP is required for services of 20,000 or less. So we just cleaned up that language so that there wasn't a hole and then tied with the other part of our policy. So that group will be voted on tonight as well. Any questions on that little group or those changes? No? All right. And then we're still working on, I kind of grouped them in three groups. Um, one section has to do with policy 4526, computer use and instruction. And we had revisions that were recommended by uh, Frank and Shauna that we went over. And then we realized we also have 4526.1 internet safety. And 4526.1 R, which is the regulation for internet safety. So we decided we might as well just take care of them while we're at this. So they all went back to Shauna <laughs> and they'll come back to us at some point in time. <coughs> A second group uh, is policy 2521 school board conferences, conventions, workshops. This was just kind of a discussion that came out of um, a desire to discuss what the board wants for development purposes or what our goals should be. Just to have, kind of have that discussion. So we talked about the existing policy on our books, which is this 2521, and I'm reaching out to NISBA to see if they have any recommendations that are different than our current policy, just to start that discussion. So that's that group that we're still working on. And then the third group, which is a huge group, um, which came onto our radar because of some NISBA update recommendations. We started to evaluate it, and we realized it touched so many spots, and we talked about this in prior months, but at our meeting uh, this past month, we kind of came up with a plan on how to deal with it, and it is going to take the whole year for parts of it, and the last part of it will be the revisions to the code of conduct, which we usually do once a year, unless we have to change it. That will be the culmination. <laughs> um, but then we kind of have some subgroups. We realized it touched on our current policies, which are 0115. And there's the related R and E, which is student harassment, hazing, bullying, prevention, and intervention. That's kind of one group. Another subgroup under this has to do with extracurriculars, and we realized it touched 5200, which is extracurricular activities, the regulation that goes with it, 5210, which is student organizations, and 5225, which is student personal expression. So those are kind of a group that Frank is working on uh, with the administration and anyone else that happens to be involved. And then there's another group which kind of touches sports, which is 5280, interscholastic and modified sports, 5281, uh, which is the academic eligibility of such. And the, we have, also have an athletic code of conduct. 
So those are grouping and going with Joe Sapienza for his look and that talk with his team. And then lastly, our code of conduct like I talked So we have that huge group that we'll kind of work on throughout the year and maybe we'll bring pieces of it as they come ready to come to the full board. And I think that's it. Arjun. Oh, great job. <laughs> You're okay. amazing. Well done. I, uh, I can't believe how well coordinated this all is. Uh, Rachel, do not let her walk away from that chairmanship and espousing <laughs> thing. She, uh, she gets it. It's really wonderful. Thank you. It's a lot of work. It is. Our next meeting is, uh, got switched in case anyone's watching. It was supposed to be October 6th, and it is now going to be October 19th at 3 30. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank and you if guys. anyone has any policies on the board that you want us to take a look at, let us know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, committee chairs and committee members, for all the work you're doing in those areas. Um, oh, it's really important to getting the board the board helping the district. Um, any questions about any committee work? With that, let's move to uh, item 7.1, the C a resolution regarding Environmental Quality Review Act. We're going to take this one singly. Um, are there any questions about this? All right. Does anyone want to move it? I'll move. Oh, Robin, go ahead. Anyone want to second it? Okay, I'll take that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, with great appreciation for all the work that has gone into item 7.2 um, as well. This is the bond proposition. And would anyone have any questions? Okay. Would anyone like to move this one? Would anyone like to second this one? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Now item 7.3 is the energy performance proposition. We've been referring to that as the EPC because it will be a contract if we vote it so. Um, are there any questions about that? We had a special meeting where a dead fourth representative came and presented. Um, I believe that was recorded as well if anyone wants to go back and enjoy that one. Uh, 7.3, anyone want to move it? Move it. Anyone seconding it? Second. Not, okay. Almost. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I move. Thank you all. All right. Um, I think we can take several of these in, together if you're all ready. There's an energy audit agreement, 7.4. The smart school investment plan that has to do with the vestibule. Um, the whole, each door is $5,000. Yeah. Good on that. I just, it's it's a thing that's been coming together for years, and it's finally going to happen. We're all happy. Um, and then there's some agreements with VTA and UEV, and let's just take all of those. Seven point four to seven point eight. Are there any questions anywhere in there? Would anyone like to move these? Anyone like to second these? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now we have the policies that, again, are revisions, but secondary because of the complexity and so forth. And thank you again to the Policy Committee for the hard work. Um, is it okay to take these two? I think you can take them all together. All right. Unless anyone has any last questions. Any last questions on any policy matters? <laughs> all right, we're going to go 7.9 all the way down to 7.14. Anyone want to move those? I'll move them. All right. Anyone want to second those? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, um, there were some generous uh, donations of art supplies from Dr. Warren Silverman. If we'd like to accept those, is there uh, anyone like to move that? Sure. Thank you. And anyone like to second that? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much for that generous donation.
Um, that concludes the business. And with that, we have this second opportunity for the public to be heard, um, particularly if there's any uh, comment on topics covered in the meeting. If you'd like to address the board at this time, please do so. Great. Um, all right. Um, 8.2, opportunity for the board to be heard. Is there anything? I think, thank you all for the hard work. Thank you all, the administration and so on, teachers, staff, for the hard work getting us to the point where we can put this forward. No hard work begins. Yeah. <laughs> Well, December 6th. December 6th, we'll be voting on this as a community. And I appreciate that. Um, anything? No? All right. Dates to remember. Um, aside from December 6th, when we vote on this capital project and the C as two separate items, we have a meeting on November 7th. Um, preceding the meeting, there will be an audit committee meeting at 6 o'clock, probably right here in this very room. Uh, and with that, does anyone like to move to adjourn? I will move to adjourn. Anyone seconding that? Gladly, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Have a great evening. Okay.